بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome back my beautiful sisters to our weekly lesson In this lesson we will share verses from Quran authentic sayings of our Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام In this life we have different thoughts we have different emotions if you think wrong your thoughts can lead you to the wrong path in this life and then you will start feeling wrong and then you will speak wrong and then you will act and behave wrong so it all starts the way we think if you have unrealistic expectations in this life if you want to design your life, you want to design a perfect life, you want to design perfect kids you have in your imagination. I want my husband to be like this. I want a job that is like this. I want a house to be like this. I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. I want to be, subhanAllah, all these unrealistic expectations can lead us to disappointments because when we are unrealistic, we want a perfect life. You're not going to have a perfect life. No one is perfect. You want to be the iron woman. You want to be the super uh, woman. No one is super. We are not perfect. Your body is not perfect. Your life is not perfect. Your children are not perfect. Your husband is not perfect. Your job, your house, your life is not perfect. We just have to take things, we have to take things easy, we have to go with what we have. Whatever resources we have, we will accept it and we will move on. If you keep stuck in your imagination and daydreaming, some people daydream a lot, they sit down and they keep daydreaming. Daydreaming is not good, it's not even healthy. What are you gonna do? You will plan. Yes, we will plan a realistic plan and we will we will figure out what we want. Yes, we will make decisions, we will make choices and we keep moving. But of course, we have to keep learning. We have to keep thinking, asking and, and do whatever we have to do. If you have a problem, you think about the solutions. You don't surrender to the problems. You don't say, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote for me. This is what Allah wants from me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to figure out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send you signals, signs, messages. You need to know what went wrong. Why am I feeling like this? Why is this happening to me? Think about the roots and start fixing. We have to find solutions. We have to keep trying. Don't sit down and surrender to negativity and lose hope. You shouldn't be hopeless. So don't have high expectations because the higher your expectations, the more stronger your disappointments will be. Disappointments are very hurtful. It's so painful. When you are disappointed, you literally feel the pain, the emotional pain. And then if you don't do something about it, then you might fall in depression. When someone falls in severe depression, it doesn't come suddenly. Severe depression, major depression doesn't come suddenly. It starts small but you leave it. You don't find solutions. You're not trying to figure out what went wrong. And then subhanAllah, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it becomes major. When you have major depression, you can have suicidal thoughts. When a person wishes to die, when a person doesn't want to live anymore, that's when the person is hopeless. I can't do it anymore. I can't. I don't want to live I, I don't want to do it anymore. This is losing hope and wishing to die. The Prophet والسلام, said, لا يتمنى أحدكم الموت. Do not wish to die. Why, Ya Rasulullah? He said, because you are one of two. Imma muhsinan. You are either a good person who does 
good deeds, who makes a lot of hasanat, فَلَعَلَّهُ يَزْدَادْ By living, you will have even more and more hasanat, and you will be more rewarded for it. وَإِمَّا مُسِيئًا And you might be a wrongdoer. Maybe you made something wrong to yourself. Maybe you have the wrong habits. Maybe you have the wrong goals in your life. Maybe your priorities are upside down. You're thinking about the unimportant things, leaving the important things ahead. Maybe you are overwhelming yourself. Maybe you're putting a lot of burden on yourself. Now there's something wrong. You're doing something wrong. Maybe you're doing something wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send you signs. Allah gives you obstacles to wake you up, to tell you you're doing the wrong things. Maybe you are on your social media for a long time. You're sitting there watching other people going, coming, buying, and, and then you're just sitting there feeling pathetic, comparing between yourself and them. Maybe you have high expectations, as we said. Maybe you're putting a lot of burden on yourself because you want to Prove to everyone that you are the iron woman, you are the super mother, and that everything in your life is perfect. Nothing is perfect. And you don't have to prove to anybody anything. You're not here to please anyone. You're not here to prove anything to anyone. You're here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're here to be good. You're here to be nice. You're here to keep away from haram, to choose halal. We're not here to prove anything. So maybe you're doing something wrong. Maybe your habits are wrong. Maybe you go to bed late. When you go to bed late, you're not going to feel good. Your hormones will have problems. You're going to have hormonal disorders. Maybe you're going to have all these emotional problems because you go to bed late. Going to bed early is the sunnah of our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and it affects your life, it affects your body, it affects your mental health, whether you want it or not. Maybe you're not eating healthy food. Healthy doesn't mean we don't put sugar in the mouth, I don't gum the junk food, I don't like, no. Healthy doesn't mean you have to go to the gym every day and lift weight, no. Healthy means just drink water. Maybe you're drinking only juice, drink water. Maybe you have anger issues. Do you have anger issues and you have always the victim mindset? My children make me angry. My husband makes me angry. My friends make me angry. The weather makes me angry. Everything makes me angry. So what does that say to you? It says that you are an angry person. So go and fix the anger. Are you always stressed? Fix the stress. Are you always overwhelmed? You need to fix that. So So your Prophet والسلام, is saying to you, don't lose hope and wish to die. If you're doing something wrong, change it. Okay, I don't know what is, what is it wrong I'm doing. Ask, learn, learn to know. Maybe you don't know. So Go and search for the answers. Maybe you took something from someone that's not yours. Maybe you are disrespecting someone. Maybe you are doing something. What is it like? Whatever it is, maybe it's a behavior. Maybe it's words. You know, the words that we say sometimes are like poison. Maybe you're speaking the wrong words. Maybe the wrong words are not for others. Maybe what you're saying to yourself. Maybe you say, I hate myself. I hate my life. I hate my body. Why can't I be this one? Maybe you're talking with yourself in the wrong way. You need to change the way you speak to yourself. So what is it that you're doing wrong? You must be doing something wrong so that you can be. Maybe you have the wrong friends. Are your friends putting you down and they make you feel like you're dumb or you're stupid and that you're unworthy? Leave them. They're not your friends. Is someone using you in this world? Are you allowing people to use you? 
Are you working in a job and your boss keeps telling you, your boss keeps telling you work more and they pay you less and they're just giving you more and more work? And you want to prove that you're the iron woman again and then you do all the job they gave you. Do you have a colleague who's using you, always asking you to do their job? And you're just doing it for them, thinking that I want to be good, so let me help. If you put burden on yourself, that's not, that's not being good. That's being naive. A Muslim is not a naive. A Muslim is clever. I help when I can. When I can't, I say I can't. Nicely. Nicely. Be nice when you say, I'm so sorry, honey, I can't. Your friend is using you. Come, take me here. Take me there. Give me money. Do this. Do that. You're, do you have someone who's putting the pressure on you and that's dragging you down mentally and emotionally? Then that's the mistake that you're doing. See, there are things that you need to learn. You need to change your habits. You need to figure out what is it that's making me feel like I don't want to live anymore. I don't have hope. Change it. Are you distracted in this dunya? Are you workaholic? You just work, work, work. You go to your job to earn money. You go back home. You want to clean. You want to cook. You want to do everything. And then you feel drained. And then you feel tired. And then you become stressed. And then you become depressed. That's not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have to have an extra clean house. If you have children, especially if you have children, you can't have that. You have kids for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Relax. Rest. Your priorities are not in the right order. So overthinking and thinking in the wrong things, focusing on the wrong things will make us hopeless and wish to die. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا يتمنى أحدكم الموت Do not wish to die. ولا يدعو به من قبل أن يأتيه Do not wish for death to come before the time it was prescribed to come. So maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still writing for you to live another 10, 20, 30 years. Why wanting to die now? So maybe... You need to change something so that you can live another 30 years with peace in your mind, peace in your heart. Because he said, When the person dies, the angels will close their books. You cannot add one hasana. And you cannot remove or wipe off one bad deed. Why wishing to die? Not focusing on, you know what, let me make extra hasanat. Let me wipe off my bad deeds. Instead of thinking about something else that's making you feel hopeless and unworthy. The Prophet والسلام, says, A believer living more is better for him or her to have more goodness. You want more goodness than you do hasanat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it clearly in Quran, man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'minun falanuhiyannahu hayatan tayyiba. I want to have a good life. I want to have peace in my mind, in my heart. It's in doing goodness. Not in running after life, after worldly things. It's not in buying too many things. It is not in working more. It's not in saving more and more money. Not in building a bigger house. That's not happiness. Happiness, فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا If you have what you need, then you have a good life. You have one meal ready for you, then you have a good life. Are you safe? You have a good life. Are you healthy? Healthy doesn't mean perfectly healthy. You can have sickness. You can have, but you're still able to help yourself. You're able to serve yourself. Then 
that is also a good sign. So instead of sitting and nagging and complaining and being extra negative, say to yourself, you know what? I choose to be patient. I choose, inshallah, to do more hasanat and wipe off my sayyat. At least you can do the very simple things. You can sit down and say, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim. When the idea comes, I don't want to live, I hate myself, why? Like There's no need to live. You say, no, stop. I'm going to make hasanat right now. I'm not going to think wrongly like that. No, I'm not going to think like this. I'm going to make hasanat, inshallah. Do tasbih. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al -azim. On and on and on. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said two words. They are very loved to Allah and they are heavy in the scale of hasanat. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al -azim. Instead of thinking and focusing on how much you hate yourself and you hate your life, say, you know what? Let me do hasanat. Better for me. I'm not going to waste my energy. Let me do hasanat. I'm not going to sit down thinking like that. Let me wipe off some sayyat and do istighfar. Astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. And while you are saying astaghfirullah, say astaghfirullah for every haram word I said. Astaghfirullah for every dollar I earned in the haram way. Astaghfirullah for everything that I did, I remember or I don't remember. Astaghfirullah for every haram behavior. Astaghfirullah for every haram thing I looked at. Astaghfirullah for every minute I wasted looking at social media, looking at the haram things, listening to haram things. Wallahi, it's a waste. It's a waste. Put your phone aside. You either use your phone, your devices for goodness to learn, to grow, to get better, or put it aside. Don't numb yourself. Don't distract yourself by going to social media and videos and become more and more depressed. Put your phone aside and say, what is it with my brain? What is it with my heart? Why am I feeling like this? And fix Fix, don't numb yourself. The Prophet والسلام, also said, The best amongst people is the person who lives longer doing goodness. We don't want to live longer to save money. We don't want to live longer proving to people that we are good people. No need to prove to anyone. We want to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are good. We want to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're doing what he wants from us. We want Allah to love us. We want the angels in the seven skies to know us. We want to go to the highest level of Jannah without judgment, without waiting in the day of judgment. That's our goal. Not to be perfect. Not to prove to people that we are good. If you're thinking focusing on the wrong things, then you will be, of course, depressed. And then the Prophet والسلام, also said to us in another hadith, Do not wish to die for something bad that happens to you. Dur is something bad. You have an obstacle in your life. You have a hardship. You have a problem in your life. Don't wish to die. Say to yourself, I do have a problem, but not forever. I am sick now, but it's not going to be forever, inshallah. We have obstacles. We have to figure out how to move on. Go around it and keep going. Don't stand up there waiting for the obstacle to move away. No, you move away from the obstacle and find a solution. Search, ask questions, learn. I have these obstacles. What can I do to get rid of it? What can I do to move on? How can I solve this problem? Learn. But Say you have a problem and you became overwhelmed and you said, okay, I tried, it's not working, I still wish to die. The Prophet ﷺ said, 
فإن كان لابد فاعلة if you still wish to die then say instead of saying يا رب take my life I don't want to live anymore say this dua our prophet alayhi salatu wasalam taught us this dua if you have to say a dua if you need to ask Allah then ask this dua اللهم أحيني ما كانت الحياة خيرا لي يا رب make me live if this life is better for me وتوفني إذا كانت الوفاة خيرا لي if death is better for me then let me die ya Allah Allah knows Allah knows if this life is still holding something good for me if living is better for me because I will still make lots of hasanat I'm going to still remember Allah I'm going to still say astaghfirullah and remove sayyat I'm still going to make hasanat remove sayyat I'm going to have higher level in Jannah I'm still going to change something. My faith, my iman is going to get stronger. Things are going to get better. Ya Rabb, make me live. Allah knows. But if death is better, me, better for me, then let me die, Ya Allah. Allah knows. Maybe, maybe if you live, you will lose faith. Maybe you will lo lose your iman. Maybe you will leave your religion maybe you're gonna do something haram maybe you're gonna turn to haram maybe you want to numb your emotions and then you go and you you get drugs or alcohol or something allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to go to the wrong path if i am unable to solve my problems if i am unable to change ya Rab, take my life before i go to the wrong path so allah knows if you're so weak unable to do the right thing then you might i know a lot of women they have a lot of problems marriage problems okay your husband doesn't love you what is it like okay you live your life you don't need him you don't need him if he doesn't love you you have a problem like maybe he's a good person but he's not the right person for you but it doesn't make us okay uh, my husband doesn't love me my husband and then they take off their hijab and then they stop praying. And then she starts going out doing something wrong. Wrong, I don't mean she goes with men, but maybe she will be numb on her phone. She wants to do plastic surgery. She wants to change how she looks because she thinks that, oh, my husband didn't love me because of, of how I look. No, honey, it, it has nothing to do with your look. It has nothing to do with you. You are two different people. You and your husband are just two different people. It doesn't have to be nasty. Some people, when they get divorced, they declare war. She wants to go and tell everybody about what happened. Don't tell anybody what happened. Again, no need to prove to anybody anything. You're not going to go prove to everybody that he's wrong, not me. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's not about who's who's good and who's bad. There's no evil people here. It is just that you are two different people. Don't do the wrong things because you're thinking in the wrong way. See? So sometimes, okay, if I'm going to do the wrong things, if I'm going to go and do that, no, it's better for me to leave this life. Okay, so why doing the wrong things then? We choose to be patient, inshallah, and we choose not to do the wrong things. And this is how Sahaba did. The companions of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, they understood life. They understood how to make decisions. They understood how to have a good lifestyle. So they knew that. They knew the meaning of this hadith. Qais bin Abi Hazm in Sahih al-Bukhari narrated that Qais bin Abi Hazm said we went to visit Khabbab ibn al-Arat Khabbab ibn al-Arat is radiyallahu anhu wa ardah is a companion but Qais bin Abi Hazm is a tabi'i so 
He believed in the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. He became a Muslim, but he wasn't in Medina. He was in another country or in another city. I don't know, but he wasn't with, he did not see the Prophet with his own eye. He only heard about him. He became a Muslim. He decided that he wants to travel to meet the Prophet in person. On the way to Medina, subhanallah, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam died. He did not get to see him in person. So he's not a Sahabi because he didn't see him in person. He believed in him, but he did not get the chance to see him in person. When he arrived to Medina, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was already gone. So he is a Tabi'i. But he went to Medina and stayed there, met the Sahaba, the companions, and started practicing Islam. Khabab was sick. He wanted to go and visit him with other Sahaba. And he said that, we went to visit Khabab when he was sick, and subhanAllah, he said, Khabab said to the Sahaba, because he was in pain, and he did K. K is... People have a, a way of healing. They bring a metal, they heat it with fire, and then when it is hot, they put it on a certain place in the body to heal the body. This is called al kay all right? Khabab ibn al-Arat did kay as Qais is telling us. He said, Khabab did the... Okay, and we went to visit him because he was extremely sick. He had something in his tummy. He did K. Okay. And now I will explain about al K Islamically, what is the rule about it. But let me talk about the story here first about the Sahabi. And then he said, Khabab said to us, he said in front of us, Inna ashabana ladhina salafu madaw. Our beloved friends, the companions, died before us they left and they went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they did not have enough of this dunya subhanallah Khabab had like a good life he wasn't poor but he was talking about the poor sahaba he said our friends our companions left and they didn't have enough of this dunya. Maybe they didn't have enough food. Maybe they didn't have, have enough money, didn't have enough um, items, furniture, whatever. But they left this dunya and they went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have money that I... I don't know what to do with it except to bury it under the ground because they didn't have banks. Of course, we shouldn't put the money in the banks. That's another story now for the interest. But they did not have places to save their money in. They didn't have a safe. They didn't have cupboards. They didn't have something with a lock. They had a very simple life. He said, I have a lot of money and I am burying it under the ground. I don't know what to do with it. ولولا أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نهانا أن ندعو بالموت لدعوت به. So he is saying that I have a lot of money. I don't know what to do with it. I'm just burying it under the ground. So he has money, but he's not happy. He said, I am in pain that wallahi, if the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام did not tell us don't wish to die, I would wish to die. But I'm not wishing to die because I'm doing what my Prophet والسلام, said to me. He was hopeless at that moment. He felt down. He was in pain. But he wanted to do what the Prophet والسلام, said. Ya Allah, if life is better for me, then let me live. If death is better for me, then let me die. Let Allah choose for me. So he did that. But he lived. Allah knew that life was better for him. And he lived after that. He got better. He got healthier. And he got better. 
And then subhanallah, Qais continued the hadith and he said, and one day we went to visit him, like we went to see him and he was building like something. He was building a fence or a wall. And so he was fine. He was healthy building it. And he said, Khabbab said, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمَ لَيُؤْجَرُ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ يُنْفِقُهُ A Muslim is rewarded for everything they give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَّا فِي شَيْءٍ يَجْعَلُهُ فِي هَذَا التُرَابِ Accept the money that he saves. The money we save, we're not going to be rewarded for it because it's sitting there. We're not doing anything with it. And when we die, we leave it to people to inherit us. We're not going to be rewarded for it. But whatever we do, whatever we give, we are going to be rewarded for it. So now let's go back to al kay because we have a hadith where the Prophet والسلام, said that he saw a vision. He saw the ummah, his community, the Muslims in the day of judgment. And he said that he saw 70,000 of them they are going to go to Jannah without judgment and without punishment. Then they're going to go to Jan the Jahannam, not even one second. So they will go straight away to Jannah and they will not be judged. And he gave characteristics of them. He said they are the people. He said they do not. Um, means they don't ask for ruqya. Is asking ruqya from someone haram? No, absolutely not. It is not haram. You can go to someone and say, can you please recite ruqya for me? Verses of Quran and dua for Allah to heal me, for Allah to um, grant me something that you can ask from people to recite ruqya for you. It's okay. It's halal. But he said, some people... Those believers who do not ask anyone to do ruqya for them. Why? Because they have certainty. They say, why would I ask her to recite for me Surah Al-Fatiha for Allah to heal me? Why don't I ask Allah? Why don't I? I am in pain. I am in need. I will do ruqya for myself. Ruqya, by the way, doesn't have to be 20, 50, 60 pages of Quran. Surah Al-Fatiha alone is Ruqya. Al-Mu'awwidhat, Surah Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq, Al-Nas, Ayat Al-Kursi. It is not how much we recite, it is the certainty. It is, you are certain, Allah is a Shafi, Allah will heal me, Allah is the healer. I will recite Surah Al-Fatiha over and over and over and over and over until I am good. You can say certain du'as. The Prophet والسلام, taught us when you have pain, put your right hand where you have pain. The pain is on your head. Put your right hand on your head. The pain is in your heart, on your chest, on your throat, on your arm. Put your right hand where you find the pain or on your tummy, whatever, and then say three times, Bismillah, 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 and then say seven times, A'udhu bi'izzati Allahi wa qudratihi min sharri ma ajidu wa uhadhar. You are asking Allah to protect you from whatever you have and whatever you might have. All the symptoms. So this is, subhanAllah, this is very important to that. My faith in Allah makes me recite the Quran. I will say the dua. I don't need to ask someone to say, to say it for me because I believe in Allah. This is between me and Allah. See, that's why Allah says, la yastarqoon. It's not haram to ask someone to make ruqya for you. Not haram. But it is better you do it for yourself to have the stronger connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, Wala yaktawun, al -kay. Remember, I said, uh, Khabbab, he is a Sahabi. Maybe he did this 
before the Prophet والسلام, mentioned ولا يكتوون. Maybe after, but is it haram to do K? It is not haram, but it is better. You want a higher rank in Jannah? You want a stronger Iman? Avoid al K. Al K is to use metal, heat it with fire, and then when it is very hot, the professional will put it wherever you, they need to put it on your body to make your body heal. Yes, it heals. But there is something. What is the wisdom behind that? Until now, I did not read a, like, what is the wisdom exactly? Like, like physically or mentally or whatever. Like, why? Allah knows. I don't have to know the wisdom. Maybe one day we will know why. But, but scholars said because we're not allowed to use fire to heal. Fire is for punishment, so just avoid it. But is there any other thing? We don't know. So al kay is not haram, Islamically, but it is better to avoid it. Go and find another alternative other than healing by fire. And then, subhanAllah, the other characteristic of the believers who will go to Jannah without judgment, without waiting at all in the day of judgment, inshallah. They rely on Allah. Because I rely on Allah truly, I'm not going to ask anyone to do ruqya for me. I'll do ruqya for myself. Because I rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly, if Allah doesn't want me to use al kay I will avoid it and I will go find alternative. That is, yes, Jazakillahu khairan, that is the, that is the dua. And before it, you say three times, Bismillah, 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 and you put your right hand on the part that has the pain. So this is what we do. You don't sit down and feel pathetic. You don't sit down, feel hopeless, unworthy. You're worthy. Your worth is not in what people think about you. Your worth is not in how much you own, what you're wearing, and how you look. Your worth is in how much goodness do you do. And that's between you and Allah. It is not that the goodness that you do with people. We don't do it for people. The goodness you do between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not by, what I mean is over-serving. You're not going to go over-serving everybody to be a good person. You will serve when you can. You will help when you can. And then you're going to rest. You have to rest. Because the Prophet والسلام, said, لا يحل لمسلم. A Muslim is not halal for him. And يذل نفسه to humiliate himself. A Muslim is not allowed to humiliate him or herself. Companions asked, how does a Muslim humiliate himself, Ya Rasulullah? He said, when he or she put burden on themselves more than they can bear. Do not put burden on yourself. Do not overwhelm yourself. Do not stress yourself. Do not make yourself tired, exhausted, drained. Do as much as you can. Rest. Recharge. Do the right things. Do not waste your time. Do not waste your energy on useless things. That's what we do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change your life until you change your own life. You have to change your habits. You have to change your lifestyle. You have to change your thoughts, your emotions, the words you say to yourself, the words you say to others, your behavior when you are alone, when you are with people, your intention, all these things, you are watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't allow fear to control you. Don't allow anxious emotions to control you don't be exhausted don't overthink the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam taught us one dua you say it every day allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan 
I seek refuge from you, Ya Allah, against the worries. You worry, stop worrying. Plan and do what you can do with dua, with remembering Allah, everything will be okay. But worrying is not going to help you in anything. Al-hazan is sadness. Don't sit down feeling sad, hopeless, depressed. Say, I need to learn. Why is this happening to me? Why am I feeling like this? Why am I behaving like this? It is me versus me. It has nothing to do with others. No one makes me angry. No one makes me hate myself. No one will make me lose hope. It is me versus me. If someone is toxic, if someone is using you, if someone is putting you down, keep away from them. Don't listen to what they say. Don't allow their words to put you down. You have to say to yourself, that's what they say, but I don't believe them. That's not the case. What they are saying is wrong. And then you stop. You don't keep thinking about them. Oh, why did she say this? Why did he do this? Why is this happening? No why, where, when. No questions. Allah does whatever he wants. But I have to have my job as well. I have to do my part. So you're going to ask Allah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal kasal. You're going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also to prevent you from al-ajz. Al-ajz is disability. Disability is not only a physical one. It's, it's, it's a mental one. You can be weak mentally. You believe what people say. And then you become stuck in your thoughts and you become hopeless. No, don't be disabled mentally and emotionally get up and say i don't believe what they say i need to change myself i have to be a better person keep learning keep growing keep improving well kassel is laziness i need to do something don't sit down on your phone for hours and hours don't sit down talking with people and complaining and nagging no just get up do what you can do and then everything will be okay. And then you're going to ask Allah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal jubn as well. Al-bukhl, don't be tight. Take care of yourself. Don't be tight on yourself. Don't be tight on your family members, your friends. Give them love, give them attention, but not overgiving. In a balanced way, be balanced in everything. Wal jubni, don't be coward. Don't be coward sitting there waiting for someone to save you, someone to change your life, someone to come and do something for you. No, you have to get up and do it. Don't say, oh, they're going to they're gonna say, oh, she's depressed. Oh, what are they going to say about me? What are they? Sometimes a, a person is coward because they think of people. People are going to say that I am this, I am that. Who cares what people think? If you're doing something haram, stop it. If you are sick, go and ask for help. Go to a psychiatrist, go to a psychologist. Oh, people will say that I am sick or they're going to say that I am insane. Go help. Go seek help. Don't tell anybody. You don't have to tell people that you have depression. Do you have suicidal thoughts? Go to experts. Ask them. Seek help. Don't say, oh, what people are going to think. You're not going to tell anybody what you're doing. You're not going to tell anybody that you have suicidal thoughts. But you're not going to sit down doing nothing about it. You're going to go and you're going to heal and you're going to ask questions and you're going to research and you're going to say, why is this happening to me? And what can I do about it? And you're going to start a new life of healing. It's a journey. It takes time. But you're going to do that. You're going to sit down. You're not going to sit down saying, oh, this is my life. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for me. No, Allah does not choose for you to be miserable. Allah wants you to have a good life. The good life is to have peace in your mind and peace in your heart. Get up, go, learn and grow. Change your habits, change your life and you will be fine. Wasbir wa ma sabruka illa billah. Be patient. Patience comes from Allah. Keep asking Allah to guide you. Keep asking Allah to help you. Keep asking Allah to grant you the best. Don't be sad of what they say. People will speak whether you want it or not. 
Don't be sad they judge you. Don't be sad they talk about you. Don't be sad. Don't believe what they say. Focus on you changing yourself. Don't keep focusing on people. But they are hurting me. But they are, I don't know. Allah says, وَلَا يَمْكُرُونَ don't be upset. Daiqin is when you are annoyed, when you are upset. Why are you focusing on them? Pull yourself out of that situation and take care of yourself. Do the right thing. Their plan is not going to be impacting you if you don't allow it to impact you. You say, I choose to be patient. Let them say whatever they want to say. Let them do whatever they will do. I don't get angry. I don't revenge. I don't overreact. I don't panic. I don't care what they say. I know myself. I'm not going to prove to anybody anything. I'm not going to even explain. I'm just going to make hasanat. I don't have time to think about people. Hasanat is my goal. I'm going to make millions and billions of hasanat. I'm going to remove millions and billions of bad deeds. That's what I'm going to be doing. Focus on you. Do the right thing. They have a plan against you. Someone wants to hurt you. Someone wants to harm you. Allahumma kfini him bima shit. Allahumma kfini him bima shit. Our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam taught us, protect me from them. Your way, Ya Allah. I don't know how. Allah will protect you. Protect me from them, Ya Allah. You have, your job is to make dua. No one can harm you if you make dua. Why do we say in the morning three times and in the evening three times, Bismillahilladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama wa huwa sami'u al-alim. In the name of Allah, nothing will hurt us in the, on this earth or in the skies. Allah hears what's happening. Allah knows what is happening. Why are you scared? No one can hurt you, harm you. Before you leave your house, you're going to say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. In the name of Allah, you leave. I rely on Allah and there is no power, there is no strength except from Allah. Allah will protect you. Just do the right things. Just say the dua. Learn the dua of every situation. We say, the, oh, the jinn, the, the devils. Are you scared of jinn? How on earth are you scared of jinn? If you pray the five prayers every day and you say the supplications after every prayer, you remember Allah when you go to bed. You remember Allah even when you go to the bathroom. How are you scared? Do not surrender to fear. Do not surrender to worries. Do not overthink. Don't focus on the wrong things. Don't distract yourself. Sit down, dua, dhikr. We have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will protect us. Allah will take care of us. When we have a problem, Allah will solve it for us. We choose to be patient. Allah is with those who are fearing Allah. They know Allah is watching them. I know Allah knows everything the angels are writing. Allah is with the people who do the good deeds. You want Allah to be with you? Then Allah will be with you. If you do goodness, if you keep yourself away from trouble, make the right decisions, say the right words. When you say the wrong words and you behave in a wrong way, and then you say, oh, I have problems. Problems do not come from the air. They come from a reason. Find the reason. Solve it. Fix. And then Allah will give you the good life that you want. Yes, my love. Do the right things. Keep asking Allah, keep learning, keep researching, keep changing, become better uh, day after day, inshallah. 
until we meet in the day of judgment on stages made of light with uh, happy faces we're going to be under the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be with our prophet alayhi salatu wasalam we will be happy and then we go to jannah and the angels will say to us salamun alaykum bima sabartum peace be upon you your patience led you here let's choose to be patient less talking less talking less nagging less explaining more hasanat, more dhikr, more dua, more Quran, more salah. When I'm going to focus on dunya, we're going to focus on akhirah, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us all the good deeds that we do. May Allah guide us to the straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take care of us, inshallah, in this dunya and in the hereafter. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا my beautiful sisters والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته